I'm uh, Marian Mantovani. I'm working uh, in the International Secretariat of the Palestinian National Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions Committee, which is uh, the national coordination body of all Palestinian uh, political parties uh, in the major civil society, mass movements, uh, trade unions and other organizations. It is the biggest uh, Palestinian coalition that came together after in 2005 Palestine and the Palestinian uh, movements launched the call for boycott, divestment and sanctions until Israel respects Palestinian human rights and international law. The moving close of this uh, government, Modi's government, uh, to Israel is uh, a fundamental shift in uh, India's policy. Not so much because that government has started the, the re military and economic relations. They have been already there. They have only strengthened that. But what is new is the qualitative shift that it's not only anymore abra uh, about commercial relations, but it is an ideological interlinkage between Israel and Hindutva, the idea that two ideologies that are supremacist, that are fundamentally racist, that are fundamentally exclusionary, that need an enemy to survive, an enemy to kill every day to survive, have joined together hands and are strengthening each other. And that's the scary part, not only for the Palestinian people that are suffering, but as well for the Pal uh, Indian people that are suffering from that one. And the best case here is the case of Tuthukudi. When uh, the killings have happened in Tuthukudi, we've been shocked but not surprised that the police that has uh, shot the protesters uh, has been trained by Israel. Since, uh, since a few years, uh, uh, the Indian police forces are trained uh, uh, in Israel and sent to Israel uh, to training and they're not only trained by the Israeli police forces that would have been already bad enough they're trained by the Israeli border police now the Israeli border police is not a border police because Israel doesn't declare borders Israeli border police is actually the military occupying force in the West Bank there are those at the military checkpoints that are shooting Palestinians, that are humiliating Palestinians, that are deciding that women can't pass checkpoints and have to give birth uh, at the checkpoints, that uh, students are arbitrarily arrested and instead of getting to the university, go to prison, that workers can't go to their work. That is the job of the border police uh, and the night raids that are happening uh, in the West Bank, that is the job of the border police. The sniper's killing of the 135 uh, protesters in Gaza, that's the job of the border police in Israel. And then, not by chance, I'm seeing the snipers in Tuthukudi looking almost the same than what I know from the images from Palestine. So in that sense, uh, uh, that kind of new relationship between Hindutva and Israel is harming not only Palestinians but is a threat to the human rights and to the democracy in India as well. And in that sense I do think we have uh, an important joint struggle here together. One of the key campaigns and that we hope people in uh, Tamil Nadu can join in is the call to boycott HP, Hewlett and Packard which is something you may even have already purchased or may think about purchasing. And our call is not to do that until HP stops enabling Israel in its uh, apartheid regime. HP is not an Israeli company, it's a US company, but it is fundamental in making Israel function the way it does. Uh, three years ago we started a campaign and HP had four pillars of complicity with Israel. The first one was that it was digitalizing and running the Israeli prison system. Uh, we've done an amazing campaign together, especially with uh, Black Lives Matters in the US, the black movement, and have been able already 
to uh, ensure that HP got out of this pillar of complicity. But we have another three that we want to break down and with your help we can do that. The first one is that HP is the sole provider of laptops to the Israeli military. So when you want to buy a laptop, please do think and ensure that you're not buying the same laptop that the Israeli military is using to coordinate the shooting and the killing of the Palestinian people. Yeah, the third point about uh, HP, uh, and that is probably the most uh, dangerous and worrisome of all, all those pillars of complicity, is that uh, HP runs Israel's uh, National Population Registry. That sounds quite innocent, but it isn't. Because that registry registers exactly how many rights you have and how many rights you don't have. So it depends on how you're registered in that registry, whether you have access to land, whether you can go and live in a certain place or not, whether you can pass a checkpoint or not, whether you're forever uh, besieged and enclosed uh, in Gaza, whether you can go and marry and shift to another place or you can't, whether a checkpoint is open for you or not. So fundamentally it decides the entire structure of Israel's segregation system and oppression and that is what HP runs. So in that sense uh, getting HP out of that one means getting one of the key complicit corporations out of Israel. The campaign is continuing it is growing globally from the US to Australia First of all, I would like to thank, uh, to start with, uh, the Students' Federation of India, who was the first uh, mass movement that has endorsed uh, the call for boycott uh, of uh, Juliet Packard uh, HP uh, last week. And I would call on all the mass movements uh, and organizations to join the SFI and uh, others in uh, promoting a strong and effective campaign to boycott HP. Do not use the same technology that is being used to kill the Palestinian people. Until HP does not get out of Israel, you le don't let HP get into your homes and offices. There is a key part missing or a key part not understood that Israel is a colonial project since the beginning. It is the idea and this is how the pro-Israel movement Zionism has uh, sold itself as well to Europe to say we are the bulwark of Europe of the West against the barbary of the Arabs. It is fundamentally a military base of the West in the middle of the Arab world. So it is anything else uh, or could the complete contrary of a national independence struggle. It is a colonial pro project to ensure that the independence struggle of the Arab world is not going to be achieved. And today, in fact, we are seeing not only the Palestinian people being completely oppressed and always denied uh, uh, its right to, uh, to independence and sovereignty and freedom, but as well the effect on the rest of the Arab world and West Asia, where independence is at the moment really a mere formality uh, with the rest of the governments clearly dependent uh, on the Western powers. Evidently, uh, Palestinian resistance has uh, had incredible victories over the decades. Uh, if the first victory really is to continue to exist and to continue to resist. Israel, in fact, uh, when it was created exactly 70 years ago, uh, the slogan was, uh, the old one will die and the young one will forget. Uh, nobody has forgotten. On the contrary, 
Palestine is on the global agenda and the solidarity movement is growing on the ground, uh, whether that is uh, that Israel wanted to build its apartheid wall within four years when it started it up. Now, it is uh, since 2002 until today, 16 years, and it's still not finished because at every single acre, it had uh, people protesting, stopping the works. Uh, where the works had happened, the wall got torn down again by the people uh, with all ways of uh, physical protests, of legal protests whatever it is. I think what we all should learn from the Palestinian people is that uh, never giving up and always believing that victory is possible is one of the most important things to actually achieve it and, ch uh, and achieve a, a change and achieve a revolution in the end. We should always keep the hope and the faith. And I do think another thing uh, because people as well say solidarity uh, and that boycott movement, how can that uh, ever make, make a difference? That was uh, the first thing that I heard in 2005 when the call started. Today, Israel has built an entire ministry to fight uh, the boycott, divestment and sanctions movement. And that ministry today has a bigger budget than the entire bu budget of the Israeli Foreign Affairs uh, Ministry's uh, activities. I guess you don't need to ask anybody else. We do have an impact. Israel is uh, getting uh, fearful of, that, of the people around the world. And I think that is a kind of empowerment we can all be proud of and we can all build on and work together. And in effect, we have every day a victory. The amazing thing about the BDS movement is that there isn't a day that in one place or the other, a small group, a bigger group, a municipality, a trade union, a cultural institution, a singer, uh, joins the boycott. And it is all these small little steps, all these small little victories that make the big difference. So it does not matter if there is something happening in Chennai or down south or up north uh, or whatever. There is no place that is irrelevant. There is no group that, that is ir irrelevant. There is no activity that is irrelevant because the BDS movement is built of all these activities that have ensured that today Israel has declared the BDS movement the uh, most important threat to the uh, continuity of its apartheid regime. That call for boycott uh, was launched in, on the 9th of July 2005 uh, as a result of the evident and apparent failure of uh, more than a decade of a negotiations process, which Israel has only used to make things worse for the Palestinian people. It was a decade where more settlements had been built, more land had been stolen, more people had been uh, put in prison. And by that time, Israel had already started to build what we call its apartheid wall, i.e. Uh, the surrounding of uh, Palestinian villages and cities by an up to eight meter high cement wall that steals practically all the land uh, and water and resources of the Palestinian people, leaving those Palestinians that are not yet refugee, practically refugees in their own homes because they're deprived of everything except for a small living space enclosed by walls and checkpoints. And that is a, uh, a result of 70 years of Israeli apartheid and occupation and colonization. In fact, uh, the majority of the Palestinian people is already a refugee population since 1948. When India became independent, Palestine became occupied 
and uh, ethnically cleansed by Israel. Since 70 years, Palestinians are now struggling and they're asking the international community to stand up and the people around the world to stand up where governments have repeatedly failed to do what they're supposed to be doing, making international law to be respected. Palestinians, when they call for boycott, divestment and sanctions against Israel until it respects uh, Palestinian human rights, are just asking a fundamental thing, that the international community respects its own laws. This is not even a revolutionary demand that is much less than that, and not even that one is being implemented. And that's what we're actually struggling for. The revolutionary part of the boycott, divestment and sanctions movement is that we're going to the people and the mass organizations and the parties that are supporting effectively the Palestinian cause and tell them you can make a difference and you can make, you have a fundamental power in ensuring that uh, Israel cannot continue to profit from its occupation and uh, military aggression against the Palestinian people. And you can do it by defunding that occupation. Because a capitalist state and a colonial project cannot survive if it does not make profits. And how does it make profits today? And that's the interesting part, and I guess that's a bit part of my mission here in India. It is making profits mainly because it is exporting and getting the money from the global south. Uh, we all know that the US is one of the strongest supporters of Israel, but the US is actually not the one that is pumping the money into uh, Israel or not only that, that organization. If we, if we look closer how the money flows are going today, the key industry in Israel, and not surprisingly, is the war industry. The war industry, the whole military and security industrial complex in Israel, 70% of its production is uh, for export. Half of it is going to India. That means that India today is paying half of the snipers that are killing the people protesting in Gaza is paying half of the military occupation of the West Bank and Gaza, is paying half of the repression of the Palestinian people, where 50% of the Palestinian male population at least once in their life go through an Israeli prison, including torture and so on. So, uh, and that is not only India, we could look at uh, Latin America and uh, Africa as well. But India is not only a question of military relations, it's a question as well of, uh, for example, the agro-business. The agro-business uh, export of agro-technology to, uh, to India from Israel is a main huge business. And we, if you've heard yesterday that uh, India will enter into a water crisis, is already in, in a water crisis. When I heard the news, I was like, that's a report that for us to hear tomorrow that we need more Israeli technology. But, and that has been the work that we've been doning, uh, done with the All India Kisan Sapa since a few months now. Uh, we have looked at it a bit closer and we realize that it is not Israeli's technology that will help the, the Indian people. Because Israel's technology is not about helping small farmers. It's not about developing from the ground for a vast population. Israel's technology is about taking over land, stealing water in order to use it for your own illegal settlers, the elite population, and stealing it from the rest of the people, the Palestinian people. That is not a technology that will help India, on the contrary. Absolutely. Uh, I do think uh, what that boycott, divestment and sanctions movement has achieved is giving power to the people. Uh, it would be fantastic to see one day an Indian government that puts military sanctions, a military embargo on Israel, uh, an Indian government that lives up again to the 
legacy that India has had since its own freedom struggle of support for the Palestinian cause. I really call on all the citizens of India, the people of India, whose money is being spent uh, today in the billions to pay for Israeli weapons, weapons that are produced on the blood and in the laboratory of the repression of the Palestinian people. I call on them to ensure and pressure their government that it stops these uh, flows of finance to Israel. Because this does not only harm the Palestinian people in being a direct flow of money, bankrolling the Israeli occupation and military aggression of the Palestinian people. It is as well a flow of money that brings back to India the worst of what Israel has to offer. It's repressive uh, methodologies and technologies that you have already seen down in Tutukudi, uh, up in Kashmir and many other places. And I hope we can all stand together in one joint campaign against uh, these military and security ties with Israel for a military embargo on Israel and for democracy, secularism and human rights from India to Palestine.